this is about, like I said, uh, the custom uh, RFA site product. So we're not we're not using default clone content types for this migration. Just thought I'd point that out as sort of a disclaimer. So the, the content type is called story. Um, it was over 200,000 articles or stories, so it's fairly big. There are bigger migrations. Nobel comes to mind. I think it did half a million pieces of content of some sort. Uh, I originally wanted to do this at the Naples conference, but didn't get a chance to submit, and was disappointed because they had me beat anyway. So I couldn't say I had the most number of. Is Rob here? Am I supposed to just press play? Or if the volume works, but <laughs> you can turn the volume up, huh? What do you want to do? Oh, just go to the next slide. Hit right on the ring. Yeah. It's not be working. Yeah. That's too bad. <laughs> this is not clone versus bricolage. Uh, bricolage is a very nice CMS, I'm sure. It, you could make the case that there was nothing wrong with what they were doing, with, with what uh, Radio Free Asia was doing um, at the time. Uh, I do know that they had a lot of, uh, like basically text areas, so their they're editing, the UI was kind of bad, so. Say slide. Slide. Oh, nice. <laughs> 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 That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Added bonus. So uh, this is not how to do your own migration, although it can, may help you. Uh, this is not best practice, although there are maybe some best practice things in here. Next. <laughs> so Radio Free Asia is a nonprofit in DC. Sorry. What? That broadcasts news and information in nine native li Asian languages to listeners who do not have access to full and free news media, I'm told, by their website. Uh, so, and it, obviously this is non-web stuff too, they do shortwave radio, this sort of thing. Uh, but the website is a big part of it. And so, they were, I would assume, looking for a better process. Uh, they have numerous content editors, I'm sure 20 or 30 people working on, on this site full time. Uh, they translate all the services to English. They publish them in, in the original language service, and then they uh, translate it to English. So, a lot going on there. Okay. Here's the site. Um, not an ugly site by any means, but you can see this. Uh, I don't really need this much space for the navigation. Taking up half the uh, page, um, so but not a, a terribly ugly site. But this is what it looks like now. After I won't show that, I'll wait till the end to keep you in suspense. So pre-migration decisions. They were using bricolage, which meant that they had a relational database. Um, no one understood the, the the tables at all, and I didn't want to learn the tables and no one else did. Uh, we thought about using HTTP to crawl the website, that was a possibility. Um, I didn't really want to do that because I didn't see how I would get all the stories, but they were on the, the file system, which I was very familiar with being a Unix person, um, and they called it you know, baked content. It was served from the file system and cached by uh, Akamai. And so that provided, at least at the beginning, the very clear, the most uh, straight in, clearest migration path that we that anyone would come up with. Essentially, to me, it's the equivalent of you know finding all the stories on the file system and then showing them where they go in the in the new site, which is what that little find statement at the bottom means. So I knew I, I didn't know a whole lot when I started this. I knew a lot. I mean, I was a consultant, I'm a clone consultant, and I too flown for a living and I have you know clients and they I do stuff. But uh, going into this I guess I had a limited set uh, my scope of knowledge was a little bit limited in that I only knew a little bit of Python and I knew how to run Zope and things like this, but didn't have 
a tremendous amount of Python skill, although I had been somewhat of a Perl web dude in the 90s. So I knew I could write Python. I just hadn't done it to any tremendous amount. Um, the same thing with Zoe in the stack. I was you know, fairly familiar. So, excuse me. What happened? Is that my slide? Oh, right, okay. So, I knew I could run scripts with, with Zoe CTL run. But then I didn't know what to do next, and I knew we had the scope of what we needed to do was fairly large in that we had all these language services and we wanted to migrate all these stories from the file system and all these different places. So, um, you're going to have to flip back now. When I say go, okay, go back. But that's forward. Yeah, back. Just, okay, one more. Forward? <laughs> Sorry. That's good. Now flip forward one. So one of the first things I came up with was I found a Zozo 2 product called Stepper. And this basically let you define steps and break this up into smaller pieces, which I thought sounded pretty good. OK, here we go. So <laughs> also, we needed to walk the file system to find the stories. And uh, I knew how to do this in the shell, but not so much in Python. It's going to be back and forth between these two. Okay, that's forward and that's back. This is forward? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> OS walk in Python was, was tremendously helpful. In particular, the cookbook example that is labeled right there. Um, sorry, I didn't mean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And of course, we had to parse the HTML. Um, probably a lot of different ways to do this. Somebody just said to me recently, beautiful soup, I think it was Alan. And I did not use beautiful soup, but I did use uh, uh, the SGML lib module. In particular, in the Dive into Python tutorial, there is this base HTML processor that used, calls that, uses that module to do this, and that's, I kind of latched onto this and, and went with it. And of course, they had all this content in different languages, or different codings on the file system, and needed it to be Unicode, so. Python does Unicode out of the box extremely well. This was the easiest part. So like I said, Stepper lets you break your tab, migration into tasks, little pieces. It does heavy lifting, like commits for you. Um, and that's the syntax we call it with OCTL run. Run.py is part of Stepper, so the path, the full path to run.py. The clone site object, and then the steps are changed that you define. I can't see that at all. This is, can I write that? No. <laughs> Yeah. It's supposed to be. Yeah, it's kind of dark. Sorry about that. Um, why is it? It's going on the projector. These are. This is a dictionary. And these are the keys, and these are the values. So the key is the step of the migration. The value is the class that's going to do the work and the arguments to the class. So, yeah. Yeah, so we work out for all. 